Actually, in my latest paper, which is unpublished, it's in peer review right now, it passed the first level of peer review, I'm really excited about it. I actually flushed that out and it comes out naturally from the equation. I'm not, you know, attempting to make that proof, it's just a proof that comes out directly out of the equations that I've been writing. And um, it's, a, it's equations that are attempting to unify physics. And as a result, it unifies everything, and it's it's remarkable. And if I was to describe it in simple terms and in in easy way to describe, um, basically, uh, it was found almost a hundred years ago that space, the vacuum, the space between things, the space between planets and stars and galaxies, or the space between atoms in a in a molecule or the space inside the atom, which is 99.99999% space, uh, is not empty. It's full. Um, that we're bathing in a fundamental energy that's at the source of all of creation. And actually, this was known by many ancient civilizations all around the world in earlier time and then was kind of lost through uh, the advancements of physics and I think we're coming back to it now. Um, realizing the, in quantum theory it's called vacuum fluctuations and, and when they were discovered, when we tried to analyze how much of these fluctuations, how much energy there was in the space inside the atom, uh, we found that it was infinitely dense with energy, that the vacuum, that space inside the atom is not empty at all, but full of energy. And it might be hard to conceptualize, but maybe an example I could give is like, right around us right now, there's all sorts of, you know, microwaves and radio waves and all this stuff. And we think there's nothing, you know, until we take a radio station, for instance, and tune it in, and then we hear a voice, and we realize, yes, they, there's, you know, radio waves going around, and so on. It's a little bit like that. We look at the vacuum, we look at space, and we think it's empty. Mm -hmm. But in it, embedded in it, is this incredible energy that my theories are starting to show is actually the source of everything, the source of all the material world, which is mostly space. When we're talking about this stuff, you know, all of our material, we're made out of 99.99999% space, and that space is full of all this information. And it is the medium that connects all things. Uh, so for instance, when I, I analyze the amount of energy inside the volume of a proton, which is the nuclei of an atom. It's really, really, really teeny. It's the teeniest little thing. When I, s I analyze how much of this vacuum energy there is there, I find the exact mass of the universe. That is, all the other protons in the universe, all the other atoms in the universe are holographically expressed within one proton, showing that it's all interconnected. So magnificent. So, so we are all at every single moment in our life. We are connected to all that is. There is a way for us to connect to this infinite source of energy. We've been separated from it for a long time. That's right. And when you actually um, uh, look at all the great masters that walked the earth and try to teach us new ways of being and, and expand our mind and expand our consciousness, they all talked about turning inwards and going towards the singularity, towards the center where, you know, this energy where we could connect with the universe, where we could connect, you know, they might have said with God or, you know, but it has always been there in so many ancient tradition and you know now I think we're, it's time to write the physics for it and understand how it actually works and then when I did not only did I get the mass of the universe but I can I, from the relationship of these vacuum fluctuation on the surface of the proton to the inside vacuum fluctuation I was able to extract an exact solution to gravity I was exact I was ab able to exact extract the exact 
exact mass of the standard mass of the proton. I was able to extract how many particles there is in our universe, how big is our universe, what is its energy level, how many of our universes there is in a larger one, how many of those ones there is in a larger one, because now we've got the yardstick, now we've got the measuring scale so that we can understand the whole thing because you know this realization that we're actually bathing in a field that connects all thing and it's it's holographic and fractal in nature so from analy analyzing a piece appropriately we can understand the whole